She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. Mr. Darcy is kind of a jerk. And believe it or not, I'm not really a jerk in real life. So it's kind of uh, nice to uh, play against my type. Who is that gentleman over there? A friend of Mr. Bingley's. She's intrigued by Mr. Darcy because she sees similarities um, in herself, in myself, and in, um, and in Darcy. I think at the beginning she's not interested in him, um, but also because he makes such a, a point of um, putting her down that it's difficult to swallow that, so that actually feeds her and challenges her. I would easily forgive his pride if he had not mortified mine. He is uh, misunderstood, um, but he, he, when you first meet him, he's acting in a way um, he's very shy, he's very guarded, um, he's very calculated as well. And so that's not exactly um, the most uh, welcoming or, or inviting kind of trait. She speaks her mind. You mustn't judge people so hastily, Lizzie. But Mr. Darcy judged me rather harshly this evening. It's important to her to be an individual, um, but I also think she's very passionate and as a family woman, her sisters are really important to her. She, I think, dreams of love, um, but her idea of what that is is ever-changing. And I think it's very important for her to live her life the way that she wants to and, not, and be influenced by other people as, as little as, as possible. But there is one of her sisters. They're behind you, Miss Elizabeth Bennet. He's intrigued by her and how she, he is disarmed by her in, a, in an amazing kind of way. And so when, he, when that gets quite close to him, he doesn't have the words. He can't, he can't express himself. He, can't, he just shuts down, runs from it. Women or men, I don't know if this is necessarily a sexist thing, but I, as I'll speak as a woman, there is something intriguing about being the one to break a man, being the one who's going to endeavor to, he, that he will endeavor to open up and, and share his sensitivities and his vulnerability. And so to see that Mr. Darcy chooses not to do that, um, I don't know if it's a challenge or whatever it may be, but as a woman, there's a small belief that maybe he'll open up for me. Listening. One of the intentions of how we're going to tell a story like this is going to be grabbing the moment when it's your moment. But one of the things that is, like, that is scary about this period is um, we've talked a lot about is, is being confined or restricted by, by the period. Mm -hmm. um, and so just with the design and all the, like, the talks that we've had, it's, we've kind of given it this very, I don't know, it's almost like, we've, like a breath of fresh air in it because it can be, you know, and we enter and we stand around and talk and then we exit. But it's, it, we've, I think we're really finding the magic in it. And that's what I've loved about uh, Janet's adaptation. There really is m a magical sensibility in it as well. One, what a pity Darcy is popular at such unfollowed society. Don't you agree, One, Mr. Darcy? Any savage can dance. It's very challenging to move and talk. Uh, it, it is. and. Um, I, th I don't think we, I can speak for myself, I haven't figured that out yet. Ready, down. <laughs> it's important that you, the time period is set, it's important that the ball is set and that's necessary for the audience to, to understand, but at the same time we have very significant plot points that need to come across and I think that's a huge challenge and thankfully we have three more weeks to try and figure that out because uh, we're still battling with understanding that. And Anita, who's a choreographer, and Dennis are incredibly helpful with trying to uh, see it from the audience perspective to see how we can make that come across. It's fantastic. The, the characters are all so dynamic and for us to be floating in this world is, it, it's wonderful. I think just this show being part of Theatre Calgary season this year, it's a great, it's a great fit. I was thinking what a pleasure a pair of fine eyes in the face of a pretty woman can bestow. Love is the same no matter where you are or what time period you're in. And it's complicated and 
it's confusing and it's passionate and love is universal, love is love. And so Jane Austen's love of Elizabeth and Darcy is not that different. That's, I think that's why the, the story has prevailed the way that it has because we understand that, that it isn't, it doesn't always just happen perfectly and, and we like to see the, the struggle of it and then to see it end happily.